Hello, this is the next video in my playlist that I'm calling Generalized Linear Models. This is uh, on complementary log-log regression. It's part two. And part one, we discussed the theory of how iteratively reweighted least squares regression works for complementary log-log analysis or regression and some of the subtleties of it. And we're going to discover or explore some of those subtleties in this video too. <coughs> so again the goal is to run iteratively reweighted least squares regression from scratch and compare it with the built-in functions. We are following this video exactly the well it's not it's actually called the iteratively reweighted least squares uh, regression uh, general link function. And then uh, this is part one to the video that I would highly recommend watching. And actually, watch the end of it. It is so important to learn about this little extra negative that is never mentioned in the literature and so much underappreciated. Now, I started these R illustrations using probit regression, so I searched probit regression data and I came up with this pretty cool UCLA site. And so I'm going to bar their data for probit regression. I did it also for uh, logistic regression. Now I'm doing it for uh, complementary log-log regression. So in here, since we're using the Gumbel distribution, and that's the workhorse of the complementary log-log regression, we need this extra uh, library called extra drist distro or something like that. We're going to load the data. And then we're creating a Y matrix from it and a data matrix. And notice that here I am adding a column of ones, and that's really for beta zero. And then there's three other columns. And and maybe we should look at that. So the head of my data. So that's going to be this. So we have four columns. Y we're calling admit. And then we have three covariates, GRE, GPA, and rank of your class, I'm assuming. And then uh, the data matrix, we added a column of ones. And then, of course, Y was the admit variable. So now let's just run logistic regression, not logistic, uh, complementary log-log regression. And actually, it's better called binomial regression with the complementary log-log link or binomial regression with logistic link, binomial regression with probit link, if, since we're in the GLM setting. <coughs> and so we run it. And we're not going to look at the results or interpret it or try to understand it. But we're, what we're going to do is show that when we run iteratively weighted least squares regression from scratch, we get the exact estimates and standard errors that the built-in function has. So in step one was we create these matrices of zeros. And basically, W and G are going to be diagonal matrices that we use in our uh, process, our methods. And then B, we're going to be our first guess for our regression. So the beta 0 through beta 1, 2, 3 are all 0. Now in step two, we um, we first estimate eta, which is our linear combination, which is going to be all zeros because our first estimate of beta is zero. Then the theory, the, the mean is one minus the CDF of this Gumbel distribution evaluated in our linear combinations. And that, in more details of that can be in part one. The diagonal matrix is one over minus the density of a, the, the gumbo density evaluated at eta. We're going to let z be eta plus g times y minus mu. And our w, which is our weight matrix in weighted least squares regression, is defined as this. So it's the density squared divided by mu times 1 minus mu. And then once we obtain all that information, we can run weighted least squares regression, which, which essentially means, 
you know this piece right here and then we repeat and I'm gonna repeat it 20 times and that should be good enough so now what we do is we're gonna look at B and the well let's look at B first but notice this little pesky minus sign and that is wor so worth watching in part one without that minus and actually we need that minus to match and now the covariance matrix for our beta estimates actually is this part it's x transpose w x inverse and so we take the diagonal matrix and then the square root of those and that's actually the standard errors for our uh, beta parameters so now let's do the summary of our model and <laughs> here's our estimates for our betas and notice that those are so accurate to six seven eight decimals right and then here is our um, covariant or our standard errors for our betas which was this line up here and notice that those are also very exact to lots of decimal places and that's it and that's how you run weighted least squares regression or uh, iteratively reweighted least squares regression for the complementary log log link now in part one I told you that there's two approaches to this pesky negative one is to use it at the end like we just did or you could actually take it times your data matrix so here's X is our data matrix so if we minus that so let's take minus one times everything then when we can rerun everything again and when we come up with the exact same estimates again and so that minus that we just did two approaches to and notice that we got the same thing in in all those in in my mind is so underappreciated in uh, the C log log link right you don't see that little extra negative piece when you print out the summary results but that little extra negative is already built into these estimates and so sometimes that often goes underappreciated well that's all I have for this video hopefully you enjoyed that I'm gonna to try to copy this um, code into the comments so if you wanna mess with it and play around you're sure welcome to I hope you enjoyed it I sure did please like the video subscribe so you don't miss the next one thank you bye